So welcome to the next in our series of online messages brought to you by the friends at First Church Rally in Raleigh, Massachusetts. This is Reverend Tom Bentley, the pastor. If you'd like to know more about the work of the church, there'll be some information for you at the end of this video. So thank you for spending time with us and peace to you in this Easter season. We are in the Easter season and we are reading the gospel writings that record the things that happened after the crucifixion of Jesus. We call it the resurrection. And when we look at the gospel of Mark, which is considered to be the oldest gospel, it's in chapter 16 of Mark. Let's take a look at it. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. It turns out that earlier sources, in fact the earliest source of this gospel, only have it go to the end of the eighth verse and everything else is clearly added on by people who wanted to edit out the shocking end that the writer of Mark gives us. It ends with the word afraid. They were afraid. These women, they were freaked out. Now why? What an odd reading. It turns out that there's a wisdom in the author of Mark. He's telling us that this is the constant default position of human beings. We are really in final measure in a state of continued fear and confusion. At least for any honest person that looks at our human condition, that's what we'll see. There's so much we don't know about life. And from our earliest moment of consciousness, we are aware that we die. And that is not explained, nor understood, nor interpreted by anyone else. And it leaves us afraid and confused. And so much of life that comes to us is filled with threat and confusion and problem. Yes, we are often confused and afraid. When the vision of the risen Christ came to the disciples, and that flashed through the early Christian church, their fears that they had constructed from their past were conquered by this spiritual transformation, this living faith in and for the future. They understood and lived in what Alexander Solzhenitsyn meant when he said, life conquers death and the past is overcome by the future. The future is the promise of our awareness, our life, our existence, transcending our fears and our vulnerabilities. 
if we ask ourselves, what is the number of people who saw Jesus after the crucifixion? Those resurrection sightings. We have 11 people, the disciples. We have James, the half-brother of Jesus. We have two women. And then we have the writings of Paul that comes later when he mentions by the time he's writing, which is quite a time distant from these events uh, in Jerusalem. He writes down that over 500 people have seen or saw the risen Christ. He certainly did. And that's what I like to focus on. So what is it? What is the number? We debate it. How many people saw Jesus after his crucifixion? Mm. Let's try maybe millions. Let's try millions. Lives saved from self-destruction. Lives turned around from evil to gracious compassion. Hundreds of thousands of human beings who chose to serve Jesus in foreign places and in threatening situations, sometimes dying in the process. This is what the resurrection is. This is what it means to see the risen Christ. This is what it can mean in your life. This is what it means in mine. It's not only a mystery that defies any material explanations. It is a miracle that can make your life a miracle. A miracle of healing. A miracle of vision. A miracle of transforming love that can bring that which is dead in your life into the realm of that eternal life of resurrected hope alive in the eternal now. And that's the dimension we're called to live in in this Easter faith. It was the resilience of this Easter faith that sustained Archbishop Desmond Tutu through long years of violence and suffering in South Africa. He was there amid violence and much personal danger. He said that Easter says to us that despite everything to the contrary, this God will be for us and will prevail and love will prevail over hate, justice over injustice and oppression, peace over exploitation and bitterness. That is a resurrected life, to be able to say that with absolute assuredness. And it can be the same to sustain your life, because this mystery of the resurrection, present now, sustains all life. The resurrected Christ is the spiritual force that holds all things together in this eternal state we call existence. But for those who have seen Jesus, or even hope to see Jesus, existence is transformed to the divine essence of that creative love that sustains the universe, that holds it together. The resurrected Christ is the universal Christ in all things, even in you. So I invite you to let Jesus into your heart. Once you see him resurrected there, you will see him everywhere and in all things. He is risen indeed. Amen. So thank you for spending time with us again. If you'd like to know more about the First Congregational Church of Rowley, you can go online at firstchurchrowley.org. And of course, we'd always like to hear from you. You can call us anytime at 978-948-3993. So peace and best wishes in your journey. Thank you and goodbye.